Online on DAB. This is BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. Now, how about this for a hobby that has gone too far? A family-run brewery in St Neots in Cambridgeshire has won gold for one of their ciders. Harding's Ciders three-piece sweet was described by judges at the campaign for Real Ale as fresh and summery with plenty of crisp bite. Oh, it doesn't sound bad at all, does it, Julia Greenaway? No, it doesn't. It sounds absolutely wonderful. So I'm in the garden. I'm with Lee Harding, who's the co-owner of Harding Cider in St. Neots. In the garden, as I say, blue plastic barrels surrounding us. about 15 outside. And as I stick my head into their green shed, you can really, really, really smell the, the apples and the cider. And there's probably about another 18 to 20 barrels in here. Um, and you've got your yellow plastic apple mill. We're going to give us a, a whiz of it, Lee. And let us hear what this is. The, this creates the magic, I believe. You can hear it whirring around in the background so your cider has just won gold so tell us first of all congratulations and why is it so special thank you very much um i think the key to it is that it's absolutely natural so there's just apples and a bit of sugar that's it so the whole process from picking the apples to actually pressing them to getting them in the barrels probably takes about 12 hours so instead of having big piles of apples rotting away in the garden we're picking them off the tree pressing them getting them in the barrels and getting it sealed so it always tastes really fresh and clean now we're standing under your apple tree. Do you get your apples from your own garden? Some of the apples come from here, but a majority of them come from the local village. So what we tend to do is put an advert in the local village news and then all the people who've got apple trees, you know, the apples are going to waste. Get in touch. We go round, pick them for them, tidy up their garden, bring them back and get them pressed. Now we've got a glass of your cider sat. I know it's a touch early, but um, nevertheless we'll try it anyway, if we're forced to, I suppose. Um, let's, have a, uh, let's have a sniff. It smells quite strong, doesn't it? It is. It's about 7.5% at the moment. Um, we ferment the apples all the way through from um, um, the, all the sugars get basically turned into alcohol. And then we just back sweeten it with a little bit of sugar. So the natural sugars produce the 7.5% alcohol level. Should we have a sip? Absolutely. Breakfast side is my favourite. So. <laughs> it's lovely. I wouldn't recommend it at 8 o'clock in the morning, to be honest, but... Um, you know, all sorts. But no, it's very nice. It's, um, I mean, as you, as you say, you can only taste apples in it. And, you know, it's just really refreshing. Now, this just started as a hobby. Explain to us how on earth it's got this way. Um, we kind of got a little bit carried away with most things I do. And um, we, we were looking around. We tried making a little bit of wine. It's a bit painful. And a friend of mine, Neil, said, why don't you just try making a bit of cider? He's a West Country lad. So uh, we looked around, find, found a cider press um, down on the uh, south coast bought it and really got carried away. I think we did about 80 gallons the first year, um, which from a 20, well, from a 12 litre press, it is, it's tough work. And do you think you'd ever go bigger in terms of production? How, how much are you producing per year at the moment? Um, I think last year we produced uh, 480 gallons. So we're, we're, we're getting bigger. Probably every year we're doubling size. But to be honest, it's all about using the local apples that are going to waste. I don't really want to start buying stuff in that's been specifically grown for, for cider. So as long as we can keep getting more and more apples, we'll, we'll just keep growing. And do you think cider's here to stay? Because maybe some people might think it's kind of an old-fashioned thing. Absolutely. I mean, there's been a real reinsurgence of it over the last couple of years. I mean... Um, the, the reinvention of Magnus and Bournemouth, although they're not classed as real ciders, it's got people thinking about drinking apple juice again. Um, and, you know, nothing beats a cold glass of cider on a hot day, sitting in a pub garden, in your garden, having a barbecue. It's, you know, it is the best way to drink. And tell us how you got entered into the competition. So, local camera, the Huntington camera, have been massively supportive over the past five, six years, and they've been pushing us, really, to go further and further. Uh, Chris Rouse um, entered us in the East Anglian competition a couple of years ago, I think it was about four or five years ago, and we won the uh, second prize in the bottled cider competition, which is amusing because we don't make bottled cider, we all sell it by uh, on draft. Um, and then every year we've, we've been re-entered. This year we won gold in the East Anglian cider competition, that put us through to the national final, um, and much to my surprise, and I think everyone else is in camera, um, we, we got gold at beating all the uh, competition in the UK. Did you have big celebrations this weekend? Lots of cider, I guess, with the nice weather, especially yesterday. Absolutely. We had a barbecue and uh, a couple of glasses of cider might have been drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's going to be a nice sunny day again, Dotty. And Lee's Garden, surrounded by cider, I reckon it's a pretty good place to be. So I'm going to stay here a little while longer. All right, then. All right, then. You stay there and enjoy yourself, won't you, Julia Greenaway?